Okay, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, has anyone been Brazil before? One, two, three, four. The Brazilians are here. <laughs> and uh, is anyone here from healthcare industry? One, two, three, four. So uh, I'm going to talk about Brazilian National Health Data Network. I'm Diogenes. I'm from a company in Brazil. We are uh, hosted in Brasilia, uh, the capital of Brazil. And uh, we are talking about a little bit about healthcare in Brazil. 47% uh, of Brazilian citizens will be over 40 years in 2030. And that is a big problem for us. Our, uh, our physicians per person is one of the fewest in uh, the most developed countries. We have 1.8 physicians per thousand of inhabitants. And we have uh, another big problem here, that our health facilities does not use a lot of electronic health records softwares. Uh, for example, hospitals with more than 50 beds, uh, they are using only 6% of health record systems. And 77% is only in paper. So we have a very, very big problem here in Brazil. And uh, when we talk about it in 2030, our average cost of treatment in public hospitals uh, I don't know if anybody knows, but in Brazil, we have uh, one of the biggest uh, public hospitals uh, structure. More than 150 million people uh, were attended on public hospitals and public institutions uh, and public health facilities. And there's a big problem for Brazil, um, because when we talk about the average cost of treatments in public hospitals, when you talk about uh, people with more than 40 years, they will spend about 372 and more than 60 years, $432 for each treatment. And uh, Brazil could not afford it. So the, the people could not afford it too. Uh, people that will be able to be covered by private plans in Brazil uh, in 2030, will be only 9%. So there, there will be a big problem. Maybe 91% of our uh, population will, could not afford the private plans. So they need to be uh, using public health care. Let's talk about some numbers here in Brazil. In Brazil, we, we have about 5 billion records a year. Uh, in healthcare uh, data, we have more than 150,000 primary health facilities and more than 8,000 hospitals. So there is a big structure. And we need to optimize those services. The practitioners need tools to increase their capacity to act. To act Patients need to be empowered, and healthcare facilities need to streamline the process. So we need to develop a digital health strategy for Brazil. Uh, the, this health strategy was being developed since 2016, and on, on last year we have uh, used it on, on on a, a, big pro a big program, there is the Brazilian Data Network. And the, the main goals of the Brazilian Data Network of Health Information is to promote the exchange of information between the points of the healthcare network. Um, Brazil is a continental country. Uh, we have more than 20 states, 27 states in Brazil and uh, more than the, uh, the 200 million people in Brazil. So uh, Brazilian healthcare system needs to be big and we need to guarantee the continuity of care uh, in the public and in the private sectors. Uh, for this, we established new laws 
and that uh, enforce some medical standards, some architectural guidelines, some interoperability standards, and uh, we, we needed to use it, uh, combine it. First of all, when we talk about interoperability, we decided to use blockchain. Uh, so uh, we have uh, states that are federated, like here in the United States, and uh, they have their own laws, and they need to, to get their own data. So uh, the clinical documents are federated through the network, and the timeline of the patients are distributed in the blockchain. So all the timeline uh, items in the, in the data uh, from the patient will be stored on blockchain, and the clinical document is, itself will not be stored on blockchain, it will be off-chain. And we needed to optimize the information, so we needed to adopt a standard. The standard that we choose was FHIR. I don't know if anybody knows FHIR. Uh, is a medical standard for exchange of information. And um, maybe if you have an Apple Watch or a, Google, or a Galaxy Watch, you, you, your watch will be talking FHIR. They will be sending information in FHIR uh, to our network. Uh, we need to get integration. and. Uh, by using APIs, uh, only to, to have an, as, as an example for you, um, in Brazil there are more than 2,000 medical uh, software that are used by hospitals and primary health facilities and so on. So we needed to enforce uh, some laws and some interoperability standards and to provide APIs in order to these uh, facilities can plug in on the network. And we are using data analytics and artificial intelligence to provide uh, healthcare uh, enhance in our, in our data that is stored. And we need to optimize the service. So we are using an intelligent patient summary that is based on, the, on artificial intelligence and a native cloud interoperability. We are using uh, an agnostic cloud ap uh, approach and we tested and the, uh, what I'm talking here is on production at the moment and in one state, Alagoas, that's a poor state from Brazil. Uh, but this poor state, we have more than uh, two million records stored on blockchain at the moment. In May, we're going to production uh, in the in nationwide uh, in, in Brazil and with more than 100 million re records on the blockchain. And our strategy need to, to get the patient as the CEO of his own network. Uh, enforcing the strategy of e-patient. So we provide to the citizen uh, an app, and with this app, he can uh, know what is going on with him. Uh, he can uh, share or unshare his information, consent their data, and it's uh, mandatory for us in a, in a political data strategy for Brazil and to provide preventive medicine. So we are ready for smart device and IoT sensors. As I told you, uh, we are uh, finishing integration with Apple Watch and Galaxy Watch uh, in order to this information could be uploaded on the, on the network and can be used by the physicians, the practitioners, and so on uh, to provide healthcare. So our approach in blockchain uh, is using a shared timeline. When I go to a hospital uh, and uh, I provide my, my data and my clinical documents, I store it on that hospital and I need to go 
to an emergency and so on, uh, my data uh, can be uh, queried by the other uh, facility um, because the timeline of the patient is shared. And we, we are using these three keywords as our structure. Uh, the, the block recorded on the network cannot be changed and the track remain intact. That is a, a main key characteristic of blockchain. And the author and the content are encrypted. So we encrypt the data before it goes on, uh, uh, on a private data collection, that the approach that we are using here. And uh, then we, the, the patient need to consent their data to be used by some physician and so on. And uh, in Brazil, this uh, complied with GDPR rules. Uh, in Brazil, the, the health uh, rules are uh, above the GDPR rules, so the patient do not, do not, does not have the right to uh, delete their data because of Brazil have the right to continue to of care. So uh, the, the patient needs to, to have access to, to, to store the information on the, on the, on the health network. When is that? Uh, the data that are on, on the chain uh, is, uh, is only some uh, index data. They are not on the chain. The, 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 the clinical documents are stored off the chain on the private data collection, and they are encrypted uh, before it goes on, on the private data collection. And uh, the, our structure is distributed. The blocks are distributed among the, all the network nodes. So we have state clouds, health plans, and large hospitals that are part of the network. And we guarantee access and reliability of information. And it's trackable. The information is recorded in a chain and allows uh, order tracking without the possibility of changing the track lock. When insert the data, uh, in summary, we have uh, our EHR uh, software. They are uh, inserting data on an on a API. They're exposed. And uh, this ex API wraps up the, the hyperledger from inside and, and those, uh, the, those nodes. They are on, a, on another network that are not acceptable by, by uh, from outside. They are accept, uh, accessible only by the EHR service. And then to create the data, we verify if we have if the patient has uh, have the consent from from the data and to to that to that particular they are querying the data. Here's a blueprint of our, our architecture. We are using two channels. Uh, one channel, we are treat, treating all the fire assets and the, the documents itself. And the other channel uh, is allowed to, to, to handle the consent and log and so on on the, on the blockchain. And then, where, when this data is stored on the blockchain and it's shared between all the nodes in the, region, in the regional clouds around the, our, uh, a lot of states in Brazil. So uh, another question that is always asked is about identity. In Brazil, uh, we have a program called gov.br that provides digital entity uh, identity to uh, the cost to all the, the citizens in Brazil. So it's okay. So uh, with this program, uh, we provide some some information that are used by 
by the, the government, from the, the social number that is the CPF in Brazil, and, uh, and um, some digital information. We are planning to, to integrate this information with biometric uh, information that are used to vote. Uh, in our structure, we, we have uh, elections that, that store biometric information. We have more than 100 million people with my biometric information stored. So we are planning to integrate this to our digital identity program. Our net, national health data network, we're using some uh, components on this network. So at this moment, we are using the, summers, the summary of the survey, uh, the immunization program, um, education dispense program, exams performed, and, and the encounter that the, that the patient has did, did. And then we are planning to use some other things on this network like regulation, medical images, medical pres pres prescription, notification of birth or death, compulsory notification, general pres prescription, and so on. Uh, the, the blocks, they are in green, they are ready in production. Uh, the blocks, they are in, in yellow too, and the blocks, they are in white. We are planning to roll out uh, in uh, second semester. Uh, our strategy to DDPR uh, uh, is when we use private data collection and, and in Brazil, the Brazilian Minister of Health does not need to erase data uh, if patient wants. So all the other stuff uh, about DDPR we are doing, like encrypt the data before it going into the private data collection, uh, storing the data on a private data collection, and then uh, the hash of the, the hash it stored is going on the blockchain, but uh, the hash that is stored on blockchain uh, is a hash that is generated uh, from an encrypted data, so it cannot be decrypted. Let's talk about performance. Uh, our structure at this moment, uh, we have 2,000 TPS, uh, read and write, on the AWS cloud. We are using REFS consensus with five nodes. Uh, we are using two channels, the timeline channel and the log channel. Uh, three private data collections and CARTB as our structure. Uh, and uh, at the moment, we are using three peers for each of the orgs that are, that are on, the, on the network. We are we're having now five orgs on the network that rep, are represented by five states, and each of them have three peers. We are using Fire Standard uh, for packing messages in Brazilian Standard. And in our structure, we are using these objects as our, as our structure. Condition, encounter, procedure, observation, immunization, medication, dispense, and composition. And we're uh, using clinical documents, personal health data uh, from uh, smart device, exams, and observations from two apps. It comes unencrypted in the first moment, and then unencrypted. And then we encrypt and put it on the network. Okay? And we have two apps that we, we, had, we have developed two, from uh, the app from the patient and to the doctor. And they can put up observations and so on, and, and access the timeline. And uh, I'm going to sh show you a little bit here. Uh, we expose our APIs with microservices, and they are enabled to work with certified EMR software, and they need to have a digital certificate to send information to our network. So uh, we, we enforce that all of the, the software that uh, are going to be using the network, 
need to have their digital certificate in order to send information to the network. And we have an agnostic cloud approach tested with AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Uh, at the moment, our, our architecture are using Amazon, but uh, there are some states that are planning to use GCP and Azure as well. Here's one of the apps that we have developed, uh, the ConnectSUS Professional. It's for health practitioners. And uh, as we've seen there, they can have the access to the timeline. Uh, they can have this information. They are uh, consent by the practitioners, so, so from the patient. The patient needs to consent that information to the practitioner in order for him to access the timeline on, on his app. So uh, when, uh, when it, it's consent, uh, he can access the, the, their information and the clinical documents. And that timeline is stored on the blockchain. And when you click on the timeline item, uh, then we go on the private data collection and get their information and retrieve it to, to the practitioner. So we have uh, the mobile for the citizens too. They can access it, uh, the, all the, the, the timeline from, from all of the, the health facilities that they have been, the hospitals and so on, and to consent uh, the, the, the access to the data too. Uh, this app at the moment has been downloaded by more than 10 million uh, people in Brazil. So they are using it right now. And uh, we have uh, immunization, uh, we have medication dispense, some clinical information, some encounters. Uh, we can schedule your, your next uh, appointment to, to a doctor and so on. And we are planning to use some other features. Uh, at this moment, we are running a proof, a proof of concept with artificial intelligence. We are storing the anonymized information uh, on our uh, data lake, and then uh, we are using uh, some machine learning strategies and some AI strategies to extract some information from this data. Uh, we are doing some other stuff like using this data on a graph in order to have an, an analysis from a single person. So, for example, I have all my data that I store on blockchain, and then I need uh, some practitioner need to access my data and have some analysis on that. My data, uh, as I consent, is stored on a, on a graph database, and this graph database, we then do inferences and so on to have some, some different queries that can be done by, by, the, by those uh, physicians. Uh, we are doing some biotech stuff too. Um, there is some genetics that are planned to be used uh, to be stored. Um, they are in proof of concept too. And at this moment, we are uh, in collaboration with IBM uh, doing some tests. George is here, and they, they are helping. George and Barry are helping us uh, on moving to Fabric 2.0. Uh, all this strategy is developed in Fabric. So um, let me have some questions from you at this moment. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about AI, what we're doing. Uh, at this moment, we're storing all the data that we have. Uh, it's around two years of data that we are using at this moment. Uh, only for, Al for an Alagoas, they're the first state, we have more than 2 million records. But uh, when we talk about uh, all the Brazilian stuff, we are talking about more than 10 billion records that are 
going to be stored on this moment. Uh, we are putting all this data uh, for AI in a data lake, and then uh, we are uh, using some analysis in this first moment to have uh, analysis by political political issues. Maybe, uh, left, for example, we have uh, an issue about coronavirus, and uh, you have to get this information. Where are those uh, p possible diagnoses that that can be used to to help Brazil? Uh, identifying uh, the, the patients that could have coronavirus. So when we, we access this, this data, we use some strategies. Uh, we are using this with Amazon. Amazon is, is helping us on getting all those data and, uh, and then gather their data and, and give some, some use to them. So this is the first part of our strategies in AI that we are using. Uh, we have some other stuff that we are using, but they are not in production at the moment. Some other question? Patient cannot erase the data. Uh, uh, Patient can consent or allow or allow 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 to to a physician uh, so a practitioner to to see the data, but they cannot erase it because in Brazil Brazilian health uh, minister uh, they have the right to store the data um, uh, even if the patient wants to delete it. To, to guarantee the continuity of care. Uh, uh, when a patient do not, does not give consent, the, the, the practitioner cannot uh, see the data that they are going to have an error, an error message to uh, this patient does not uh, consent you to to show his data so that uh no that that means that uh, we cannot have uh, for that specific uh, uh practitioner the right to access but uh, if it if if it was some uh, urgent care and so on uh, we can have a break the glass situation the break the glass situation is when uh, the patient uh, needs an urgent care. Now maybe he's dying, he's going on, on a hospital and he, he's dying, and uh, the practitioner uh, goes on the, the software and says, uh, this is an urgent situation, I need to access the data. So he goes and, and put his certificate there and guarantees and, and for law, uh, he, he has the rights but if the patient wants to to go on all with with him uh, and it, if it, the uh, prediction was not allowed to do that they can be charged and, and so on Uh, in Brazil, we have a, a system called gov.br. There are uh, there every citizen can have a, an account on this system. So uh, the, we have some information on them, like the CPF. There is our social number and a lot of information from these patients. Uh, they are stored on the, on this gov.br, and then he claims. Uh, to have an account on that, and then put his email, confirm some information, and then he can log in on the on the on the app. So uh, uh, this information is already there on the on the systems. We are using some combined system databases uh, from Brazil. The database from uh, from our election court. 
the database from our uh, economy ministry, the database from a lot of systems, from our from our healthcare uh, ministry and so on. And all these databases are connected in order to have this golden record of the, the, the patient. Uh, for the private hospitals, uh, they, are, they need to send information to Brazilian healthcare ministry. So uh, it's a system called TIS, uh, and they need to send it, and they're enforced by law to send it, those informations. So uh, we are providing uh, better uh, APIs and better systems for them to to enhance their their systems to to send it. But if they don't send it from the from the network from the APIs, we can collect their information from this database. So we we plug it on the on a offline batch uh, that can capture the the information from the private plans to uh, from the private hospitals uh, to the network. So uh, maybe uh, it could last uh, uh, some days, but the information will be there. Uh, and at this moment, let me show you here. Uh, all this data, condition data, encounter, procedure, observation, immunization, medication, dispense, and the composition to compose all this stuff are stored on our network. So uh, when a patient goes on a primary health facility, uh, they go in and have their encounter information and it's stored on, a, on our network. Uh, and maybe he can have a procedure, like ah, I get a blood, blood test and then it's stored on the network. And then we can have uh, some immunization stuff uh, and then it's stored on the network. We are planning to roll out some other features from our profile uh, to the end of the year. So at this first moment, uh, when you talk about profiles, fire, we are talking about around 20 uh, objects that can be stored on the network at this moment. Uh, so it be about 80% of the procedures on the, on the network are covered at the moment. Uh, uh, at this moment, we're, we're uh, um, very, very on a pilot. Yes, we are. We're planning to to go to to all of the country. is is a very big country. We have a lot of issues to to handle on this. We have political issues. We ha and that is very very problematic on this stuff. We have technical issues. Uh, we have some some stuff like law and so on that we have to change. Uh, for uh, for this first part, we we know that this can uh, do a, a very good enhancement on our healthcare system at this moment. But we're, we're planning to uh, uh, enhance the fire profile. We are planning to, to use the artificial intelligence stuff to uh, enhance the continuity of care and, and so on. And uh, we, are, we have some, some partnerships too. We have partnership with NHS for UK. Uh, we have a partnership partnership with the government of uh, Denmark and uh, all of, of them are helping very much our structure <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think in a, maybe in two years we'll be having all of the country covered 
and uh, maybe with 80 or more percent of software. Because we, we, the other problem that we have here is not only to put it on production, but we have to go to all the primary health facilities and, and go there and say, oh, you should use it. So uh, how can we uh, help you to use it? We can. We need to buy computers for them. We need to train it. And uh, it's all the stuff that are not technological stuff. But we need to do this because it's, it's a very large country. Uh, the, those data centers now are, they are in Brazil. Uh, we have a, a contract with uh, Amazon. They are storing our data centers in Sao Paulo. Uh, when, uh, when we was in pilot, we are using West Virginia. And then we, we get to Sao Paulo uh, to store out the data because there is uh, some other problems to store data uh, outside Brazil. So the, we need to store it on Sao Paulo. More questions? Thank you.